Tim stood up and opened the envelope. He felt nervous. He had to read before the whole third grade class, and they were all staring at him. He was so afraid he might mess up, and then they would all laugh at him. A girl named Elka from the Netherlands talked before him, and they made fun of her when she messed up. She wanted a red sled, but she had said it funny, and they all laughed at her. He knew if he messed up, they would all laugh at him, too. That would be awful. His hands trembled as he opened the letter. Miss Wendy gave him a nod to start reading, but he just stood there shaking. Finally, he took a deep breath and began. This year, I've been very good, Tim said. He heard kids snickering in the back of the class, and he grew even more nervous. He took a deep breath and continued. I've done all my chores, and I've worked very hard at school. I don't want that much either. What I want for Christmas is... Kids began laughing, and Miss Wendy had to settle them down. She gestured for Tim to continue. What I want for Christmas is to meet Santa. The kids in the class burst into laughter, and Tim looked up in horror. They were all laughing and pointing at him. You still believe in Santa? One boy asked in a mocking tone. Baby thinks reindeer can fly, another said. What next, the Easter Bunny? A third said, causing the whole room to explode with laughter. But, but he is real, Tim said through tears. The kids laughed even harder. They started singing a song about how dumb he was. Miss Wendy had to step in and quiet down the class, but it didn't work. Jim, the first kid to make fun of him, stood up in his chair and cupped his hands to his face. If Santa is real, prove it, he shouted, and the whole class cheered their approval. Tim clutched his letter, crumpling it in his hands, and he wiped the tears from his eyes. I, I will prove it, he said. You'll see. Nuh-uh, Jim said. Santa's fake, and everybody knows it. They just made him up for losers like you. The teacher tried to quiet the class, but it was too late. Tim was running from the room. He ran out into the hallway and sunk to the floor, hugging his knees. He wiped more tears from his eyes and began rocking back and forth. Santa is real, he said. I know it. I know he's real, even if they don't believe me. Tim got home in a bad mood. The kids at school had picked on him all day. He would have sat by himself at lunch if it hadn't been for Elka. They made fun of him all the way home, too, and when he got home, he went straight to his room. He slammed the door and began crying on his bed. His mom and dad came in behind him a couple minutes later and sat down next to him. His mom asked him what was wrong, and he told her about what had happened at school. She hugged him and kissed him on the top of his head while he cried, but with a sigh, she told him that they were right. She told him how she and his dad put the presents under the tree, and how they would get everything ready while he was asleep. When she finished, all Tim could do was stare at her in horror. How could she agree with them? It was one thing for the kids at school to not believe in Santa, but her too? It was too much. After his mom finished telling him about Santa, his dad told her he would talk to him some more. She frowned, heartbroken for her son's lost innocence, but she left them alone. His dad waited a couple minutes after she left before he began speaking. Don't believe a word of it, he said to his son. I know tons of people who don't believe in Santa, your mother included, but they're all wrong. Are you sure, Dad? Tim asked hopefully. His dad stared out the window at something that Tim couldn't see. After a long moment, he answered Tim's question. I know for a fact that he's out there, his dad said. I've seen him with my own eyes. But Mom said adults pretend to be Santa, Tim said, still shaken by his mom's comments. Well, why don't we find out, he asked his son. A week from tomorrow is Christmas Eve. You can stay up as late as you want and wait for him. Really? Tim asked excitedly. For sure, his dad said. But you have to do as I say. Stay by the window in the attic and light a candle. When it starts to burn low, listen for footsteps, and when you hear them, climb onto the roof and hide inside Santa's sack. Don't go outside until you hear the footsteps, though. I promise you'll find him. Tim's eyes got big. You promise? he asked. His dad nodded. Just make sure to dress warm and close the window behind you. Tim began jumping up and down excitedly. Thanks, Dad. You're the best. A week came and went, and Tim sat nervously by the window. He had dressed in a warm jacket and sweatpants, with a warm hat, and he was ready for Santa. He had carefully lit the candle and waited for Santa to come. The candle was burning low, though, and he still hadn't heard anything. He was afraid that if it burned any lower that it would go out. He thought about getting another candle, when all of a sudden, there it was! He heard sleigh bells, followed by footsteps. He eagerly climbed out the window and made sure to close it behind him. He felt nervous. He had never been on the roof before, and he was afraid he might fall. But he wasn't going to miss his chance to see Santa. He turned around, and there it was! On top of the roof was a big red sleigh with nine reindeer. He saw them all neatly harnessed to the sleigh with red ropes and brass bells. The sleigh had brass railing and beautiful mistletoe and snowflake patterns painted on it. 
On top of the sleigh was the most magical part of all. It was a giant sack of presents. He wondered how it could even fit in the sleigh. It seemed too good to be true. He looked around to make sure no one was looking and he climbed in the bag. It was cold in the open air, but the bag was much warmer. Still, Tim could feel the cold winter breeze and even though he was dressed for the cold, it still made him shiver. He waited there for a long time before anything happened. He thought about getting out of the sack, but he remembered his father's instructions and didn't move. Finally, when it seemed like nothing would happen, the sleigh began to rock. The sleigh bells jingled and he heard a loud, booming voice. No Dasher, no Dancer, no Prancer, no Vixen. On Comet, on Cupid, on Donner, on Blitzen. Lead off, Rudolph. Yeah! He heard a loud crack of the whip and the sleigh lurched and rocked violently, throwing him backwards. He was afraid he would fall out of the sack, but the sack stayed in place and Tim stayed with him. Finally, after everything settled, Tim cautiously began climbing out of the bag. He carefully worked his way to the top and then climbed his way through the opening in the sack. The wind whipped him in the face. It was bitter cold and he began to shiver. He couldn't believe it. He was up in the air. He could see the houses below and he could see the trees, hills, and streams as if they were made for ants. He could see the stars and the aurora borealis shining above. It was gorgeous and in front of him were all nine reindeer. They seemed to be running on air. Driving the reindeer was a big man, holding the reins in one hand and a whip in another. He wasn't exactly fat, but he was big, and he looked strong and confident driving the sleigh. He had a long white beard and a red hat and coat. He had a sheath on his belt, which Tim thought was odd, but what was even more strange was the fact that it was empty. Still, oddly dressed or not, there was no doubting who was in front of him. Tim gasped. Santa! he cried out. The old man turned to him and smiled. Oh ho! he said. We have a little faith in trying to ride the sun across the sky, hmm? Well, come down there, Tim, and sit next to me. You know my name? he asked excitedly. Well, of course I do. I have a list, don't I? He set down the reins for a moment and pulled the scroll out of his coat. He opened it up and read aloud. Timothy Brooks, age eight, wants to meet Santa. Well, ho, ho, wish granted. Tim could hardly speak. I have so many questions, he finally said. Well, ask away, Tim, the old man said. Tim was so excited that he forgot what he wanted to ask. He paused for a moment and thought. A gust of wind hit him and he shivered. How do you deal with the cold, he asked. The old man let out a hearty laugh. Ho, ho, I live at the North Pole. This is practically summer weather, he said jovially. But I suppose you aren't used to the cold, are you? Well, no matter. Take a sip of my hot chocolate. It'll warm you right up. Tim took the hot chocolate and thanked the man before taking a sip. Instantly, he felt warmer, and the cold hardly bothered him at all. His eyes got big. How did you do that? he asked in awe. It's an old recipe that Miss Claus makes for me, he said. But you didn't come all the way here to ask about my hot chocolate, did you? He shook his head. No, sir. Well, then ask away, boy. We haven't got forever. How do you make the reindeer fly? he asked. And how do you fit down the chimney? And what if there isn't a chimney? And why do you have that thing on your belt? The old man held up his hands to slow the torrent of questions. Ho, ho, one at a time, Tim, he said, laughing. Let's see here. Reindeer, right? Tim nodded. Uh-huh. Well, that's easy, he said. They don't fly. They just run. But how are we in the air, then? Tim asked. Why, the angels carry them along, the old man said. I don't see any angels, Tim said, looking over the edge of the sleigh for angels. Oh, there, there, he said. My master sent them to help me set up for his birthday. Now, let's see. What else was there? The chimney. Well, each house has a chimney, you know. Tim eyes got big. They do? he asked. I never saw one in mine. Ho, ho, the old man said. It's a special chimney that they make for me each year. It makes it easier getting into and out of houses. See for yourself. He pointed off to his right, and Tim looked over the edge of the sleigh again to see all the houses with chimneys. He spotted one without a chimney, but before his eyes he saw swirling gold mist form a chimney for the house. Tim looked in awe. Do you want to try delivering a present? The old man asked. Would I ever? Tim said. What do I do? The old man smiled. Here, I'll show you. He took the sleigh down to the house and landed on the roof. He got out carefully and helped Tim out of the sleigh before grabbing the sack of presents. They both climbed up to the chimney, and the old man gave him a smile and a wink. Follow me, he said. Do it just like this. As Tim watched, the old man clapped and danced in a circle once before jumping way up into the air. As he fell, he slid down the chimney with a puff of gold mist, presents and all. Tim could hardly believe his eyes, and he had no idea how to do it, but
but he trusted the old man. He clapped and danced in a circle before jumping into the air. He thought he might slip and fall, but he flew high into the air and began falling. He screamed with fear and delight as he fell down the chimney. He thought he would land with a hard thud, but he rolled down to the bottom of the chimney and landed on his feet. The old man clapped approvingly. Then he opened his sack and handed Tim a couple of presents. The old man put them under the tree and pulled out a present that caught Tim's eye. It was a red wooden sled. He gave Tim a wink and placed it under the tree. Once done, the old man clapped and danced in a circle before sliding feet first along the floor towards the fireplace. He slid up the chimney and vanished. Tim's eyes got wide and he did the same as the man. He danced in circles and clapped before running and sliding into the chimney. Soon he was up in the air and he spun around until he was falling feet first. He landed gracefully on the roof, and the old man let out another laugh. <laughs> then they were all in the sleigh again, and back in the air. Does that answer your questions? the old man asked. Tim nodded. What about that, though? he asked, pointing to the sheath. The old man looked down. All that, he asked. It's for safety. There are a lot of dangerous things out there. Why, there's a polar bear up north that's ten feet tall. Oh, Tim said, seeming to understand the old man. But why is it empty? <laughs> he said. Don't you know? It's my master's birthday. That means peace on earth and goodwill toward men. Oh, Tim said, nodding at the old man's answer. He was silent for a few moments before he thought of another question. Why don't people notice your presence? Everybody says their parents get presents. Oh, they get some of them, he said. I get the rest. But my mom said she gets all the presents, Tim said, sounding confused. Oh, she probably thinks she does, he said. But when your sister asked for a new pair of roller skates, it came from my workshop. She just doesn't know it because she can't see the magic. Just like you can't see the angels. But they're still there, and so are my presents. Well, how come some kids get nicer presents and more of them? Tim asked. My mom said richer kids get more presents. The old man stroked his beard thoughtfully. Oh, yes. I suppose they do, don't they? And of course their parents buy them presents, he muttered. How do I explain it so that it'll understand? Ho, oh, oh, ho, oh. ho! I almost forgot myself. Tell me, Tim, why do some people get nicer houses and more expensive things? Tim shrugged. I don't know, he said. The old man laughed. Ho, oh, oh, oh. Well, isn't it because my master says it ought to be so? Not everything is equal or fair, and he seems to be content enough with it, the old man said. But blessed are the poor, for they are rich in spirit. And tell me, Tim, which is better, the present? or the giving and receiving of it. Is a present ever so wonderful as when you are unwrapping it? I guess it's better to give and receive presents, he said. Well, blessed are those who are given less, for their joy is greater in giving more, the old man said, leaning in towards him. I guess so, Tim said, though he wasn't sure he was convinced. He was silent for a long time, but one more question came to his mind. How come you haven't gone to hardly any houses, Tim asked. You've only got one night. Well, technically, I have two nights, since half the world is a day behind. And also, the Eastern Orthodox doesn't celebrate Christmas until January 7th, and... He cut himself short when he saw Tim's blank stare. <laughs> well, I get a little help from the angels, don't I? How do they help? Tim asked. Well, I'll show you, he said. Do you want to fly the sleigh while I catch up on presents? Tim's eyes got so big he thought they might explode out of his head. Would I ever? he said excitedly. Can I? Can I? Ho, oh, ho, sure you can, the old man said, handing him the reins. Just hold the reins like so and keep them steady. The angels guide the sleigh, but the spirits of the air are known to pull it all over the place. Whatever you do, don't let go of the reins. Now just take them and watch me get caught up. With a smile and a wink, he got up and climbed back to the back of the sleigh. He grabbed the sack of presents, and with the tip of his hat, he jumped off the sleigh and fell towards the ground. Tim watched with excitement and fear as the old man landed on a roof and began delivering presents. He was faster than Tim thought was possible. He was so fast he could hardly keep track of where the man was, and he thought he saw the old man in multiple places at the same time. He saw tons of golden puffs of mist as the old man worked his magic, and before long he had taken care of five neighborhoods. Tim was so excited watching the old man that he forgot about the sleigh, and the wind buffeted the sleigh about violently. Tim cried out and turned back to see what was happening. He gripped the reins even tighter and began battling the wind. The wind whipped the sleigh to the left, and Tim pulled it back to the right with all his might. But no sooner had he pulled the sleigh back to the right than the wind switched directions, blowing him to the right. He tried to pull the sleigh back to the center, but the wind wouldn't allow it. It was like it wanted him to go flying off course. It blew him up, down, left, and right, and every time he straightened out the sleigh, it would veer off course again. 
Tim tried to bring the sleigh back under control, but the wind had a mind of its own. It pushed the sleigh down, and he began to fall. He tried pulling back on the reins, but it was no use. The sleigh was flying towards the earth at lightning speed, and Tim couldn't do anything to stop it. He blew past houses and trees and power lines, barely missing any of them, and Tim had to work to avoid hitting cars and other obstacles. Just when he thought he was about to collide with a truck, the sleigh climbed back up into the air. Tim's knuckles had gone white from gripping the reins, and he did his best to keep the sleigh steady. Just when he thought he had it back under control, the wind blew again and he plummeted towards the earth like a lead weight. He stared in horror as he flew towards a house with no way of stopping. He saw windows and the magic chimney grow ever closer and he wrestled desperately to get the sleigh back under control, but it was no use. He was seconds away from crashing and he covered his eyes and screamed. He expected to die at any second, but when he opened his eyes, he was back in his bed. Gold mist swirled around him and there was a fireplace in his bedroom that he had never seen before. He got up and looked at it and saw that there was a letter on the mantle. He grabbed it and opened it in excitement. As he did, the fireplace swirled and vanished in a golden mist and his room went back to normal. With a gasp, he ran over to the window and saw the old man in his sleigh flying across the sky. He threw open the window and heard the old man yell, Now Dasher, now Dancer, now Prancer, now Vixen! On Comet, on Cupid, on Donner, on Blitzen! Lead on, Rudolph! Yeah! He smiled and yelled at the old man. Merry Christmas, Santa! He thought the old man couldn't hear him, but just before he vanished from sight, Tim heard a deep, loud voice carry across the sky in a thunderous echo. Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas! Tim smiled with delight and shut the window before running over to his nightstand. He turned on the lamp and read the letter. Dear Fairthen, I had a wonderful night with you tonight, and I was very glad to have you help with the presents. Don't worry about the sleigh. It takes some getting used to, and the winds can be very strong. I hope you got everything you wanted tonight, and that you got all your questions answered. Until next year, be good, and Merry Christmas, Tim. P.S. You might have a visitor tomorrow. The letter was signed S.T. Nicholas. Tim could hardly believe his eyes. It had all been real. He had met Santa. He had flown with him and delivered presents with him. And now he had proof, too! He could brag to all his classmates and rub it in their faces. Yes, he could do that. But the more he thought about it, the less he liked it. He didn't really feel like bragging to his classmates. They didn't believe, and it was their loss. He knew, and it was enough for him to know. He would tell his dad, and someday he would tell his own children. But he didn't really want anyone else to know what had happened. They could all miss out on the magic of Santa if they wanted. More for him anyways. No. It was enough for him to know that he had flown the sun across the sky. He went to bed and tried to sleep. He was still so excited from everything that had happened. But it was late, and soon he fell into a deep sleep. The next morning, his family opened their presents, and each of his siblings would shout excitedly whenever they got exactly what they wanted. He just sat and smiled and thought about the sleigh ride. Soon, the gift-giving was over, and everyone settled in and began playing with their presents. But Tim just sat by the window and looked up at the sky. He would have kept on that way, but his father called out for him. Tim, there's a girl at the door for you. She says her name is Elka, he said. She said she got a sled from Santa's helper, and she wondered if you wanted to go sledding with her. He walked into the room and saw Tim sitting by the window. I don't know much, son. But when a girl asks you to go sledding, you go sledding. Tim smiled and ran past his father to the front door. He threw on a coat and some gloves and boots before running out to play with Elka.